Continuing along the right aisle, on the second altar you will find one of the most significant works preserved in the Basilica of Saints John and Paul. It is the magnificent altarpiece of Saint Vincent Ferrer, consisting of nine panels enclosed in a rich gilded frame. It is an early masterpiece by Giovanni Bellini, painted in the second half of the 15th century. This altar belonged to a confraternity, created to promote the canonization of Vincent Ferrer, a Spanish-born friar who became famous among Dominicans, for his moral integrity and oratorical abilities. His sermons, full of prophetic references and apocalyptic tones, were a huge success. The solemn figure of the saint, face hollowed out and eyes raised to heaven, occupies the place of honor in the central panel. The folds of the white cassock and black cloak fall neatly, like those of a statue, an effect that immediately gives an impression of authority. On the left, a muscular and lean Saint Christopher, who appears to be carved in wood, is crossing the river with the baby Jesus on his shoulder. While on the right, a Saint Sebastian, with a handsome half-naked youthful body, is pierced by arrows. Both stand out solemnly against the landscape, thanks to the expedient of a very low horizon line. In the upper part one can admire, both painted half-length, on one side an elegant angel in the act of the Annunciation. On the other, the Virgin Mary praying against a red curtain. In the center we find the dead Christ supported by two angels. A scene set according to a scheme that dates back to Byzantine art and was widespread in Venice. Towards the middle of the seventh decade, together with the triptychs of charity, the altarpiece is a fundamental work in the painter's artistic career. A valid evidence of its continuous stylistic renovation.
Some panels show references to different artists. The Pieta, of Byzantine derivation, recalls Donatello's bas reliefs. Saint Sebastian reminiscent of Andrea Mantinia's painting. Some details of Saint Christopher and the Angel are based on the works of Marco Zoppo. An interesting aspect is undoubtedly the code of facial expressions of the various characters depicted. The figures in the lower register, Vincent, Christopher and Sebastian, look upwards. One possible key could be the convergence of such gazes towards the Imago Pietatis. But the presence of the soft cushion of clouds at the Dominican's feet, indicative of an ascending movement, combined with Mary's gaze, would confirm the original presence on the commatium of a further panel, depicting God the Father and the Holy Spirit. A different compositional rhythm, partly lost in the current configuration, Moreover, the central presence of the figure of Vincent Ferrer replaces the usual one of the Virgin with child. The threefold representation of Jesus in the verb of proclamation in the presentation to the world by the mother and in the moment of his passion and death, is however completed by the presence of the child on Christopher's shoulders. Sebastian and Christopher are depicted in front of a landscape background, with a lowered horizon line. The worshipper must be clear about the transcendent dimension the preacher is approaching. Earth and water, the two symbols of Venice. But also a hint of the four elements, with fire in Vincent's hand, and the air of wide skies and clouds. The altarpiece is completed at the bottom by three panels, in which a pupil of Bellini's workshop painted some miracles of Vincent Ferrer, evidently suggested by a confrere well informed about the facts of the preacher's life. Leaving aside the question of attribution, the predella panels constitute a singular example in the narrative genre. Useful perhaps to give us an insight into the qualities of the paintings in the Doge's palace that were lost in the fire of 1577.
The spatial architecture of these panels is singularly advanced for Venetian art of the 7th decade, with the stylistic features of the buildings having an obvious Renaissance influence. It shows how much knowledge of Tuscan artists in Padua had borne fruit in the painter, especially if we think of Donatello's reliefs in the Basilica of St. Anthony. The whole could be described as an anthology of Giovanni Bellini's early Mannerist figurative culture. But not in the sense of a sum of references. Rather, it is the test of an artist who, in experimenting with personal solutions, proposes an original mediation between tradition and the revolutionary novelty of Renaissance artistic language. 